Las Vegas Discount.net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. And travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. Las Vegas Discount.net. Las Vegas Discount.net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit Las Vegas Discount.net. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome to Challenge the Narrative. My name's Lee Hanish, along with the master himself, Bobby Capucci. How you doing, Bobby? What's up, Lee? How's it going? Horrible. Horrible. I'm uh, I'm over being the producer of Perfect Blue Studios and dealing with audio issues. For those of you who don't know, uh, we actually recorded a show that was actually pretty good. It was good dialogue back and forth. Um, the entire right channel, which is what Bobby's recording under, disappeared during the recording of that show. So we subsequently tried to re-record just now, and uh, I don't want to say there's a conspiracy theory to try to record the show, because I don't think we have enough people listening to the show yet to actually rate somebody to actually to do that, Bobby. But uh, there were a lot of strange occurrences. Very odd. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, we've been at this for about the last hour trying to reconnect and record this show for you. Um, In all that meantime, uh, I guess we could start off with the news from last night. and We'll go back over what we were discussing uh, the other night. So let's start with uh, the government shutdown. What's the big deal? Why did the government shut down to begin with? Well, they haven't had a budget put in place forever now. So what they have to do is every time that the government's about to run out of money, they have to go back to the negotiating table and they have to figure out what sort of budget they want to put out. And, you know, they're spending, they're spending like a bunch of drunken pirates in Nassau right now. And it's both sides. It's, it's the Republicans with their, with their big loud mouths when Obama was in office talking about how they're going to tighten the purse strings, how they, you know, they're the real conservatives and this, that, and the other thing. But now they're in control of all three uh, branches of executive power. And, and these guys aren't doing anything of the sort. The only one that's standing tall before the wagon is, is Rand Paul. And he's being just blitzed on both sides. We have a, a, GO, a GOP congressman, a Congressman Dent, saying that now he knows how uh, Rand Paul's neighbor felt. And as we know, Rand Paul was attacked by his neighbor neighbor okay so why have we continued to have a we i feel like we're in the second possibly third administration that has had government shutdowns because of budget issues uh why is this a continuing issue uh with the budget It's it's they can't come to an agreement. And then for the last eight years, you know, Obama has to put forth a budget. Instead, they 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 love to do this kind of spending because they can, you know, maybe get I don't want to say more for their buck because it's our buck. But what they do is they they can fund more of their programs and they feel like if they politic it and they hold out to the very end that they can make a you know, maybe more, they can have more resources for themselves, basically, since earmarks have been done away with, they hold up this process instead. And that's both sides of the aisle, by the way. So what we're talking about, ooh, another actor died. I just love getting updates. We've had a actor filled day of deaths, the dude from Psycho and now uh, the guy from House of Cards. Uh, oh, which guy? The, uh, you that? Uh, House of Cards actor. Hold on, I'll tell you. House of Cards actor Reg Kevin Kathy. Now Reggie Kathy. Yeah, well, yeah. And so, talking about this government shutdown, no budget in place. They're trying to allocate funds. This has gone on now, term after term after term. Um, so, what you're saying is, is that they wait until the last minute and people try to load it up, pork fat it at the last minute to get whatever little secret projects they have stuck in on the back end. Yeah, or even if it's a, a bigger uh, a bigger situation like with the Dreamers, you know, you they hold up the whole process for something like that, no doubt about it. And a lot of times they're they're successful to a, to a point, but you can only do so much if you're one man standing against, you know, the whole entire Senate. Right. Most famously when they were talking about the housing bailout, how we wound up giving tax breaks to Puerto Rican manufacturing companies 
it's very common when there's a bill or a moment on the floor when voting occurs to have things dropped in at the last second. Hence, I guess it's that's the infamous pork fattening of a bill that causes people not to want to vote for it, I would assume. Yeah, that's that's what they do. They they get all these different they have all these different, you know, pet projects that they think that they're going to get through on something like this if they they bargain their way into it. But what they end up doing is they really just screw the whole entire country over because, you know, when the government shuts down, obviously, you know, there's no national parks are open. Well, this this time around, at, 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 to be honest, though, the Trump administration, they had some uh, all these. I see, it's so hard. To, it's, it's so like it's like a. um so many different warrens in a rabbit in a rabbit's chamber with all the different branches of government that goes into something like this. So what happens is each of these departments have a, um, a reserve fund, like the National Parks Department has a reserve fund of money, and they can use that money to keep it open in situations like a government shutdown for a, you know, a specified period of time. During the, uh, the Obama administration, he didn't do that. He went completely nuclear and he shut down even open air uh, monuments, whereas the, the Trump administration under uh, with Ryan Zinke, he kept that the, the national parks open, but there was no services at those national parks, meaning like if there was um, bathrooms that were like um, maintained bathrooms, those weren't open, um, things like that, um, stores. But the actual national parks, they were open and they were free to the public, whereas if you go now with the government fully working, you have to pay to go in for some crazy reason. OK. Uh, I was noticing that during the voting that literally nobody showed up to vote, like literally half of the, the constituents didn't even show up to vote. Uh, the Republicans, uh, I think, had logged in about 104 or five votes and the Democrats had logged in about as half as many. Uh, what do you think ultimately is going to happen uh, or do you know the final outcome? Uh, I think they're going to get a budget passed finally for the first time in a while, a two year budget. I'm not I'm not a big fan of it as it stands right now. I I'm in the corner of Rand Paul and he's, you know, taking taking criticism and bombs from every side. But like I always say on this show, you know, you can change your opinions, but you can't change your principles. And Rand Paul has been the same way throughout the whole entire time he's been in office about how how the the, the spending is out of control. And I'm 100 and 10 percent agree with him that we can't keep kicking this can down the road and expecting future generations of americans to pick up the toll as we're tagging them with huge gigantic finance rate and fees on top of all of this so what ultimately is happening we just keep rolling this over year after year after year after year yeah with with no budget and then if you don't if you don't have a proper budget then how can you balance something that you don't have right so you can you can go about and you can go to the CBO and 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 you can ask you know the budgeting office what they think and they'll give you just a, the hard, a hard number on something like maybe um, a, a short term budget. But we all know how fluid stuff like that is a last minute vote. Uh, you know it could be anything. And you know they always say the devil's in the small print, right? And it's definitely in politics, especially that, that's why they produce these bills that are 1,100 pages because. You know, even if a congressman or a senator, they're not reading through this whole entire bill. They're relying on their staff to go through most of it, which, you know, is ridiculous. That's not the way I don't I, if I was a congressman or a senator, I'd be reading each and every bill and I'd hold up any single process that tried to force me to move at, a, at their pace. Yeah, I completely agree with you. So ultimately, what do you think the outcome will be? I think they'll get a two year budget passed. I think that the budget will be. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they're going to get more military spending for sure like they wanted. And, you know, I don't know where I where I really stand on that. I don't want to you know sound anti-military, but we already have the, the most – I mean the, the military budget is just gigantic as it is. Now what I would like to do is maybe keep the budget the same and maybe trim away some of the fat, some of the unneeded bases around the world and stuff like that. I think that would be a great idea. And for the Democrats, what they're going to get, they're going to get their social projects funded for the next two years. So they, it was a give and take between – politicians while the american people foot the bill there you go uh that's underway as we speak uh let us do where we left off last time which is an update on release the memo and the simple frustration of close to an hour that we spent on the topic that we lost the audio of um so re previous to the last recording we've had the memo come out and basically the mainstream media has decided that it's not worth reporting on and I say that with the bulk of, let me rephrase it correctly, the bulk of the media has decided not to report on the memo being released. 
Yeah, you know, what's funny about that, what, what I always say is very dangerous for the American people in general is, A, when the Republicans and Democrats get together and agree on something, that's usually bad for the American people. And two, with these journalists, the way that they're going off and they're, they're running interference for one of the political parties, that's not a good look, especially when you consider a lot of, you would, I would say, certainly uh, very left-wing, uh, and I'm putting that nicely, progressive types – are not buying into this whole entire Russia thing either. We're talking about the Bernie supporters. You know, there's a guy named H.A. Goodman who has a great channel on YouTube, and me and him couldn't be more diametrically opposed on the political spectrum. But when it comes to this issue, we both understand what's at stake, and we both understand that the Fourth Amendment has been just absolutely shit upon by all parties involved, everybody who's been involved with this whole entire FISA process, FISA process. And to go back even further, the FISA court themselves, at the end, as the Obama administration was wrapping up in 2016, the FISA court themselves admonished the Obama administration's Department of Justice for their abuses of the FISA system. So uh -huh. this has all been this has all been coming to a head for a very long time. And like I said in, in the previous show about Inspector General Horowitz, how he was hamstrung by Eric Holder and uh, the Obama administration. He wasn't really even able to do his job as Inspector General. They pushed all that stuff onto the DOJ instead. OK. <clears throat> Why don't you expand in greater detail? Um, if I were a common person, what would I know about FISA? All right. So basically what anyone thinks hears about FISA, I mean, up until this point, the, the common people really had no idea what FISA even was. I mean, I'm sure they heard the term, the term, but, you know, most Americans want to believe that the Justice Department is doing their job correctly and they're being blind in the way that they, you know, they way, the way they um, chase the truth. And so, you know, people aren't going to dive in and say, ah, you know, who's going to read a 99 page memo about from the from the FISA court admonishing the, the Obama administration besides a political wonk. Right. And that's what they, they count should, on that. Well, hold on. Perhaps I should rewind this a little bit. How did the FISA courts come to be? Because that's where we got off on this tangent, which was I'm disgusted with both parties because oh, this all yep. started previous. It start. I I don't ever. I know that it comes up a lot. I'm trying to steer clear from the it's a right or a left thing. I want to kind of said that this is this started as a right thing that got carried on quite happily as a thing on the left as well. Where did FISA oh, yeah, well, start? In se this FISA really started in 1978 under Jimmy Carter. And it's just been ballooned up since then. The biggest problem, like we were discussing on the last show when, when the audio got cut out, and it's one of my biggest it's one of my biggest battle cries. It makes me insane that people don't pay more attention to what's going on here. The problem with the FISA court has been the Patriot Act and the way the Patriot Act has completely dismantled our our, our constitutional rights. Right. And nothing and nothing in the world makes me more insane than these these Republicans who get up there and they yell from the mountaintops about the memo being released, but then have the audacity to to vote to to re-energize FISA and reinforce it and and get it to keep going as law. So how can you you can't have you can't have it both ways, Republicans? You know, and that's the thing. I'm 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 here to let you know that both sides are are always up to something. They're always up to stuff that we, the American people, if we knew, we'd be blown away by. But the stuff that's going on right now, currently, with, with what's going on in the, in, in the, with the FISA memos and all this, it's just coming to a head from a whole, a whole litany of abuses that starting, uh, started under the Bush administration. Yeah. Okay. So this all starts because of the Patriot Act. Um, and for those that don't remember, the Patriot Act was basically – Every crazy thing that was sitting around on either a Republican or a Democrat's desk all rolled into one, which basically says if they can somehow figure out that it is terrorist related or – where is the fine line on this? I know that it's supposed to be terrorist related, but they seem to lump Russia into this. Like they go pretty far in in the – latitude that they allow to be thrown into a FISA court with and for those that don't understand right basically if they determine that this is somehow quote unquote terrorist related or collusion with another country I no longer get rights as a citizen I just get this secret trial and locked into a dark hole well you get investigated without you being able to protect your good name 
once they indict you, like like they did uh, to Michael Michael Flynn, they have to start presenting things to the court. And as we discussed, the whole the Michael Flynn the um, prosecution Mueller has requested that the sentencing.